Hey, tennis coaching team, Patrick here. Thanks for clicking on the video. And in today's lesson, I want to cover a really important topic that really forms some of the foundation of my coaching philosophy. It's one of the areas I work on most day to day with students because it is the number one mistake I see players make on their forehand. So let's get into it. I think most players are aware of and do a good job of making a unit turn, coiling their upper body to the side as they see the oncoming ball. It's how they then initiate that shot is where they run into problems because instead of using this setup and this stored power source, they then use their arm in isolation from their body coming into the ball. Whereas what we should be doing is it should be our body that goes first. It starts the sequence and our arm, our wrist, our racket all come through after. It's what we call pull, don't push. The racket should be pulled into the contact through the rotation of my body and not pushed into the contact with my arm. This allows me to stay very loose and relaxed and passive from my shoulder down as my racket is being guided through the rotation of my body and my body's momentum. Like I said, players literally get this the opposite way around where they stabilize with their body, they stay very stable with their body and they hit at the ball with their arm where actually the purpose of my arm should be to stabilize the racket and the engine, the power source should be my body and the big muscles. This is what you might hear called the kinetic chain and where from a biomechanical standpoint, the most efficient way for me to hit a shot would be to be totally passive with my arm and just rotate my body back and through. Now, I can't do this entirely because I do need some control and stability over the racket head uh, contact to be able to control where my strings are facing and to stop this twisting that would occur if I was to hold my racket too loose and limp. But from the contact on, my follow through should just be a, a letting go of the racket head where all of this stored energy is released out and through the point of contact. There's a famous golf coach called David Ledbetter and his phrase for this, I've got to get this the, uh, the right way around, is the dog wags the tail, not the tail wags the dog. The dog being the body, the tail being the racket. So it's the dog wags the tail, not the tail wagging the dog as we see from most players. If this is done correctly, we get into a, a position that we, you might hear called lag and snap. Lag is a position that all pro players get into where the butt cap of their racket is facing the ball as they come into contact. But where players get it confused is they try and manufacture and engineer this position where actually this position should just be a byproduct of me leading with my body and having my racket coming through after. The snap would then be this energy being released through the ball whereas somebody like a, a Federer they're not going to be aware of trying to hit a certain finish position on their follow through. It's just that this racket creates a slingshot effect as it is released around our body. Now, a couple of drills for you to practice this would be to go into your unit turn and then your racket drop phase and imagine, or even better, have somebody hold your racket behind you. You're then going to feel you rotate your body into an imaginary ball, you should feel a bit of a stretch in the front of your shoulder here. And if they were then to let go of your racket, notice how much extension you get out through the ball, how long and loose a fl and flowing a swing that you will get, as opposed to this short, tight, jerky motion that you'll get if you overuse your arm. Now, another drill would be to film yourself and film yourself from the side perspective here. And the checkpoint we're looking for is you go from this sideways position in your setup in your unit turn to rotated back into the ball. So you're facing the net, your shoulders are level by the moment of contact. So I go from this position in my setup phase to this position at contact. Now, maybe I shouldn't have left this to the uh, end of the uh, video because another important element to this, if you're still struggling with this, would be to pay attention to your non-hitting arm. We wanna make sure that we clear this arm out of the way. It follows the path of my racket and comes up over my non-hitting shoulder. What I don't want it to do is drop down and across my 
body here where it's really going to restrict my ability to clear my hips. If you can really sort of practice this and master this, you get what a coach friend of mine calls going from powerless effort where we're really working hard, but for very little outcome to effortless power where my body leads the way and my racket is then released out through the points of contact. Now, I know it's a little bit more technical video, this one, so thanks for sticking with me to the end. And please, please go out and practice this. I guarantee it's just gonna transform the amount of control and power that you have over your forehand. So if this video has been eye-opening, please remember to give it a like, and share it around to anybody else that you think might find this video useful, or maybe players you see at your local courts, or maybe in your uh, in your team that are uh, that are doing this. And uh, remember to subscribe for more videos like this coming every week. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.